Oh, hello there. Come closer out of the dark and sit around my campfire, why not? My name is of no great importance, but the stories I have to tell you are... Witness, four lost souls journeying together through a grim world of perilous adventure. Be warned, though. These stories are not for the faint-hearted, and once you have heard them, you cannot unheard them. Bear witness to the Vagabond Chronicles. <sighs> Holy Skellies everywhere. Didn't go well. I hurt myself today, but still I seem to feel. I focus on the pain. The only thing that's real. The skeleton is a hole That old familiar sting Try to kill them all anyway We are losing I'm 
upon my ratty hair Full of broken thoughts And I cannot prevail Beneath the stains of time The feelings disappear You are someone else And I am still right here Where are the vagabonds My sweetest friend That's me off for a vacation, then. Fuck it. I'm going to the Seychelles, baby! And yes, and lo, the vagabonds did smote the unsmotable, and thank fuck we finished that campaign, because it took a million years. Hello everybody, hi folks, welcome back to episode 42 of this little show that we call The Vagabond Chronicles. How are you doing folks, and how are you, my vagabonds? Hey, hey not too bad, Neil. <laughs> Overlapping hell. Uh, hi, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> hi everybody. That's the in, way it goes. That's the way it goes. Hi everybody in chat. Uh, hi to the disco mods. Hi to the mod mods. And um, yeah, hi to anybody that's new. I think some new people are here. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just my imagination. Ooh, hello, or new people. So hello. if anybody doesn't know, we are a role play group that are as well as the No Big Neil shows that we do myself and Tom do on a regular basis, interviewing actors and stuff. This is our other show that we do. So if you're, this is like a role play thing. And it's fun. It's good. And you gotta have fun. So we're gonna start. Look, look at this beautiful table and the a... mess that we've made. Oh, I haven't got a table up yet. No, that's, that's a moot oh, point, oh, okay. sir. That's, they don't have no um, idea what you're talking I'm, about. I'm, I'm looking at a messy table. It's really messy. It's poss It's really, it's quite crazy messy. It's. I, I apologize for nothing. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna flip to the tables. So you need to know what the hell he's talking about. Flip the bam. table, sure. No, you say so. No, <laughs> no. Um, so we are, this is an interlude episode. We, we're gonna do a quick recap on what the fuck happened last time with this incredibly messy table um but we're also going to very swiftly introduce our vagabonds just because we like doing that and also for anybody new to work out who the fuck everybody is uh we also have some community news updates which we can do in a minute but why don't we get started why not we have one vagabond down today uh because blue's uh, indisposed however blue's going to be catching up with her stuff uh, after the break that we're going to take uh, for about a month, I think it is, about three weeks to a month, to revamp the show. Um, and we'll catch up with her stuff probably as an interlude anyway. Uh, maybe in between, maybe just play it as a thing, I'm not sure yet. Um, but she's out for today, but her character will be played vaguely by me, uh, mainly to annoy the other vagabonds, uh, just for the segment alone. So, starting initiative order, ignoring the elf uh, on the shelf, uh, we humbly ask the coward formerly known as Teddy, to kick us off. Uh, Mrs. Teddy over here, he's a little halfling and he's a little fucking wimp. Oh, he's a little fucking wimp. <laughs> Sorry, wow. can I say that out loud? Sorry. Yes, yes. I love, <laughs> by the way, I should caveat, back, back. I should caveat, I love Pete and really kind of hate Teddy. I don't know why. <laughs> No, I love Pete. Hey, Teddy. That's just the way it is. Uh, that's just Teddy, Teddy Wheat Past. You can take it away, Pete. Hi, yes, I'm Pete. I play Teddy Wheat Past. I have got the highest initiative and should always go first, but Neil likes Dell more than Teddy, so all she always gets introduced first. 
Um, yes, I'm playing Teddy Wheatpasture, who is a little halfling rogue. He likes to hide in shadows and steal things and avoid danger as much as humanly possible. But we are putting him in these bloody situations right, where yeah. we have to <laughs> deal right. with these things. <laughs> uh, I'm a very little happy Australian because uh, the right person won the election at the weekend. Hooray! Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Notice yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Congratulations yeah. to Australia. Yeah, but not, no politics, but yeah, get yeah. us conservative idiots. Yeah, exactly. Um, we're, we're working on it um, apparently. We haven't got the message yet, but there we go. All right, so thank you very much, Teddy uh, Reed uh, Next up in the order, we have Del, uh, who's Delamere, a uh, half, uh, sorry, elf, wood elf uh, outlaw, who's also archer, uh, archer, a Mark's woman. Um, and she has a little dog called Fleck, who's over here. Uh, and every time she leaves uh, the game, because she's got you know a lot of work, she's uh, Blue's actually community manager. The vagabonds get really fucked up. So let's see. This is like supposed to be a peaceful episode, but I'm pretty sure everybody's going to die because she's not here today. Uh, but that's Blue. That's what you need to say about Blue. Next up is our uh, tatty, very ratty, very tatty um, hedge wizard played by Tom Deville. Hey Tom. Neil, Neil I'm just going to ask: Is this the surprise dragon episode? Where you just drop a dragon. <laughs> no, but weirdly, I was just breezing past dragon stats in Warhammer First Edition, which is what we're playing. So yeah. maybe. <laughs> sure. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Surprise dragon! Surprise every... dragon attack! <laughs> motherfucker. Was the leech master, but really, you had to take out the dragon. Really, the leech master was a glorified puppet, and you follow the string, and there's a fucking dragon holding it. Were <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Good, exciting. It's got 59 um, <laughs> fucking wounds, dude. Suck on that. All right. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Tom. I play Ratty, who is a very tatty head wizard. Um, I got some pet ferrets called Noodle and Mr. Spidge, who helped me do my magic. I kind of know magic by chance, although gradually it's kind of emerging that I seem to be some kind of connected with the name of Tal. Um, and I sort of seem to possibly be some kind of avatar of Tal because I've got a weird birthmark on my drum. Yeah. Um, we're going to get to that in a minute, actually. I, I, oh, yeah, interesting. We're getting to, we're getting okay. to Tom's bone. Yeah, we, we're, we're, just starting in, in, we're starting in a very specific way. Um, this episode, <laughs> chapter 42. To the bottom of matters. <laughs> very good, sir. Uh, thank you very much. And bringing us on to Double Entendre King himself, uh, Clem, who is playing a what you might find under your like the edge of your boot on a dark day when you squelch into something and it makes this noise and you go, what the hell was that? And you look under your boot and you see something that pretty much looks like Quinn. Uh, he's played by Clem. Hey, Clem. I always love your descriptions of my character, Neil. They are fantastic and they just get better and better every single time. Hello, welcome. chat. Most welcome. Most welcome. <laughs> my name is Clem and I play Quint, who is a, um, well, a burnt skaven. So um, yeah. sort of a bit of a skaven kebab, really. He's a um, burnt skaven which... fucking hero. Look at this posture. That's anatomically incorrect. Look at that. It's amazing. I, He's a hero. I am adjusting that for the new He's characters, Neil. I'm working hero. on it. <laughs> I want to fancy the rat man, and I do, so <laughs> leave him alone. All right, all right. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Anyway, yes. Um, so um, he's um, uh, a little bit mad because he was uh, kicked out of his um, his clan, which is pretty good for escaping actually, because usually they just eat people. Yeah. So um, mm -hmm. he's got to get away there. Um, hit it under a waterfall. I think he's just. Uh, I think he was just very good at running. Yeah, I think um, <laughs> really good at the cowardly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so he uh, effectively was um, yeah um, met up with uh, these people, uh, convinced them not to kill him, which was um, another wonderful feat, and um, yeah, has been trying to avoid getting killed ever since uh, with marginal success. But yeah. he is down a fate point, so it's Ooh. getting close. <laughs> yeah, sad Neil, the god of fate points, who's over here, uh, was very yeah. so very satisfied with your yummy fate point. Let's get on yeah. to why you lost a fate point and bring us back into the game. <laughs> uh, so the last we saw, we saw our other vagabond who is uh, our first player kill actually, uh, who is Ziggy Hauptman, who got mad and, and basically had a, a bump on his noggin and, and lost all of his fate points and blah, blah, blah. Ended up uh, with a dude called Captain Empire, Captain Empire, um, sacrificed himself for the greater good accidentally uh, and actually sort of waylaid the uh, leash master. Um, he was then killed by the leash master, who then raised him as a zombie, put a huge mess of fog of war around, uh, which you then had to go through, which I thought was a fucking awesome dynamic of the last game. 
I think it was fucking boss. Yeah. What the, the Leash Master did a massive yeah stink a massive fart. stinky fart that basically was just fog everywhere, and then you had to walk through it like that. It's kind of like dra- uh, Into the Dragon, Bruce Lee Mirror Room. It's kind of like that. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So anyway, pretty, you managed to defeat him. Good. Yeah, it's pretty good. So managing to work finally as a team together, you sort of whittled him down hit point by hit point until Blue did this very cool like Robin Hood uh, Princess Thieves thing with two arrows, I think it was, and fired into both of his eye sockets. Um, he then twizzled around and went, what a world, what a world, um, and exploded. Uh, and then that sort of ceased all of the machinations of the Leash Master's plans. And all the skeletons around Le Maison Town, the surrounding area, just pretty much dropped to the ground like a pile of bones. Um, They're just bones again. The bones, exactly. The last thing that we saw actually was Ratty standing naked, getting up from the mud naked, been riding around in the mud yes. as a massive <laughs> fucking ferret. Uh, he sort of started <laughs> hey, I'm naked. Gonna, I'm going to come out and say that Ratty is not shy. Ratty is, <laughs> is body, body positive, man. Um, He's just standing there. Presenting himself, he's not. He's not like, oh, oh, I've got to quickly scuttle yeah. behind the tree. Well, yeah, he's just, he's a hippie man. He's, he's, he, he's, he, he always struck me as rather ta-da. So yeah. he's just kind of scratching himself a little. Bit. <laughs> yeah. And actually, actually, what actually happens at this point is that you sort of, I think, you remember all of you coming together and there was like sweeping cinematics and this kind of cool shit going on. Um, and then actually, he sort of just, he sort of like looks around for his clothes and he turns around. And you see on his his proud buttocks, his his sort of muddy proud buttocks, he has <laughs> this one kind of like really strong birthmark on his left cheek, which sort of starts yeah. glowing and it's like glowing and faintly glowing and humming. And as it starts glowing, it's almost like the power within it has been dissipated slightly. Another birthmark appears on his right cheek. So actually, the answer to where is his magic birth cheek, a birthmarks, or it's actually on both cheeks. And, warm, and it starts getting a little warm. Actually, oh, Ratty, uh, we're gonna what are you doing to the cannon meal? We're, gonna, uh, we're, gonna, we're jumping straight into it. So very, very quickly, yeah. Ratty. Um, Neil, yeah, we're gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. Neil, yes. Neil, can yes. I just ask? Yeah. Are both birthmarks W's? And when I so when I bend over, it's wow, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I will allow that. In the nature of good role playing, <laughs> I will allow that. It's just wow. It's just a little wow, baby. All right. So, um, so yes, he bends over to pick up something, which you don't need to see that, but he does. It looks like a little wow. Um, so yes, yeah, so he's got these Sorry, two. Everybody. It doesn't look like wows at all. It looks like the the mark of Toll, which is not really like a W. Um, anyway, um, so he's got these two birth marks on either birth marks on either cheeks, um, and you sort of like you sort of get your your ass feels a little warm for some reason. And you stand up and turn around and everybody's just staring at your ass and you suddenly get very self-conscious. I think that's where we're going to start. We're going to start on your ass cheeks. No, no, you don't get self-conscious. <laughs> Sorry, Neil. Have to totally <laughs> there. All right, okay. Not He's out and proud. Yeah. Okay. So that's where we're going to start. So you see, sort of Blue um, just starts breathing very heavy and she just looks at all of you and just goes, what, not even a, not even a thank you? And just sort of stomps off with, and sort of calls Fleck over and stomps back over and goes, I'm going to go to bed. And she starts wandering I, towards La Maison Tell. If this thing hadn't snapped, I'd have, had that. I'd have done that. <laughs> right. Bloody thing snapped. <laughs> yeah. Are you, gonna, can you, you want to roll for a performance check to, <laughs> to make a big deal out of <laughs> no, it? No. All right, no. cool. All right. Uh, what are you all going to do, folks? You're sort of standing over the wizened corpse, well, the, the bones, the decaying, dusty bones of what once used to be the leash master. Uh, Ray, what's that on your butt? I don't know exactly, but it is like you know. I my I, I feel like I've got toasty cheeks. I can only assume um, it's some sort of after effect of turning into a bloody great big weasel. <laughs> I don't know, really. Um, I you know I've, I've had a bit of a weird time this last like today. You know, <laughs> what? Why did you turn into a weasel? <laughs> yeah. Um, Let's not skip again, over that. I, I I think a lot of it was to do with that, you know, I, I had this bit where I sort of communed with Tar, you know, that old fella Tar, who I reckon might be the Squirrel King, or maybe he's mates with the Squirrel King, or I don't know, but I had a chat with him, and he sort of powered me up, and I, my hair went a bit wild, and suddenly there were all sorts of things I could do, new things, and it what? seems to be one of them. And wasn't yeah. the Squirrel King just too much cider? 
It might have been the cider, yeah. That it was. I did have a little drink for Dutch courage before this fight. Um, are you so going to start? Are you all start getting, Are you having this conversation on the move back to Le Maison Tel, or just standing no, there, start bollocking no, naked? Just, <laughs> just start bollocking naked. Right. Okay. I hope they're just destroying my magnificence. <laughs> well, yeah, well, exactly. We're used to making ratty, right? That's this is yeah. an unusual thing for him to be nude. Master, Master, Master Ratigan, uh, um, huffling. Um, I, 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 I think. There is a little bit of an issue here. We we we're stuck out in the middle of the night. It is night, isn't it, Neil? Yeah. Yeah, it's sort of like coming okay. towards dawn. Actually, it's about four okay. or five o'clock in the morning. It's summer it, as well, it, it, so the lights. So you see on the horizon, in fact, you see okay. a sort of like got the orangey, mm. yellowy uh, hint of a corona uh, peeping over the edge of the horizon, like mm. the sun's about to start rising soon. I I uh, although I don't think we were. We, we risk another attack by Skaven this close to, to, to morning. Um, we, we do have quite a lot of things to search around here. Um, and uh, uh, must, ma Master Wizard, um, uh, to check to see if anything is magical and, and evilly magical and, and pick them up and maybe take it all back to the monastery. Thanks for using the technical what, 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 term what of evilly. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a very clever rat. I'm doing my best. Here. Really? I think he's pretty fucking educated for a rat, actually. He's pretty, pretty fucking sophisticated. A little too sophisticated, actually, Clint. Um, no, so carry on. Um, for, I, 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 I think my brothers may, may at some point uh, arrive looking uh, for the chest. Who didn't, uh, just a quick question, who didn't see the rats or experience the rats on, on the, the Skaven on top of the La Maison Town when you were sort of fleeing? I'm pretty sure it was just Dell. And Pete, maybe? No, no, I saw. I shot. I shot one. You shot one, right? So does does yeah. Ratty know what you're talking about? Uh, yeah, because he threw the um, I, I, was I the wasted the salt of stone oh, at them. That's right, you did. <laughs> yeah, I turned them into the rat. Yeah, so you all know yeah. what you're talking about. Fine for fine. That's fine. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, I, we we got to get this box to someone I know. He wants he wants it pretty bad. Then, 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 so, then, I, then I suggest we, 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 we find the, the what, what, what do you call them? The, the, the penguins. As he does that, he, his hand comes out and just sort of taps his like knuckles and fingers along the side of the archaeosca, and you realise his hand is now webbed like a penguin. <laughs> <laughs> well, you go do that. I've got a, a tent that I need to uh, just go and uh, yeah. check for. <laughs> I, 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 I leave thievery uh, to the thief. If you need a reference, it's Pete, not... I'm just putting the tent reference over here. <laughs> Cha-ching! Right he says that, he starts moonwalking backwards, like, oh, I'm just gonna, just gonna have a look at this uh, interesting tent over here. All right. Come here, you gorgeous little tent, you. Mm. Actually, at yeah, this point, this, to, this, this point, Scoot goes, Scoot goes forward and goes, um, no, that you know they did try and buy my bum quite often, but shouldn't shouldn't we? Um, and then he just throws up. <laughs> he, just, <laughs> he stops. He goes, sorry, bit of a delayed reaction to just witnessing and living through everything. Anyway, shouldn't we go and get the those the penguin things that you were mentioning? One's over there. It looks pretty fucked. He points towards Cake, who's like still like like <laughs> like lying on the ground like that like pretty looking pretty battered yeah oh they yeah old, they? Ma master, master smith if you wish to go after cake i'll go after the other one yeah all right i'm just um they, watch out they bite you they bite your nunu and um just starts, just starts walking <laughs> on, goes, yeah okay we're all friends now did you just say did you say they bite your nunu i didn't say that i didn't say that he's your... acting darling <laughs> so, darling i was referencing some kind of he doesn't know what the word nunu means i mean no, no, darling. <laughs> just improvising darling um you yeah, know he, he said that he doesn't know what it means but he thinks it's appropriate are, are we going to set fire to Captain Empire as well to make sure he never comes back? Well, speaking of which, his body is very much on the ground. The sword that was run through him, um, which the Leashmaster had, had actually melted along with the body, including the staff. Oh, that he was thank on. God. Um, <laughs> all that is of the remains of... Uh, well, Ziggy is intact, although he he looks like he's... Actually, he's, he's intact, but he's, his whole body's gone on some weird transformation. Like, the veins have all popped out onto his, on his arms and... Like his face is all grayed and blackened and he's got like these weird black vein marks all across his body. So the possession that, that it was overtaking him in, in the fog when he was risen basically as like a, a, an undead champion um, went with the leash master. So, but his body was ravaged by it as well as being burnt before. He's in a terrible state. Um, 
but he's intact and you could try and find a way you could just you know hoik him back to La Maison Tal somehow um, but yes it would probably be a good idea to give him some or you can bury him here it's really your call to how, how you feel about him or you can spit on his body and leave him for wild animals I mean you know it's well, Ziggy right <laughs> Well, he'd do the same for us. It's what he'd he would do want. the same. <laughs> it's what he would want. He'd do the same for me. On, on, on the plus side, I, I hear there's an awful lot of real estate um, available these days in the um, in the crypt. Actually, considering it emptied itself. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. Uh, does he get a hero's burial? No, he does not. Yeah. So, what do you want to do, folks? We can break it into. Um, gameplay narrative we don't have to be like okay. every single like fucking round of, of what you can do but what's the plan so we we'll go through all of you and you can confer at any point so if somebody mm. says something you think oh you should do this instead <clears throat> you most you're likely to tell you can tell everybody uh what you what you think of them <laughs> and their choices in life uh that's fine so we'll go around we'll start with uh ratty then pete uh then klim uh we'll go that way around uh, and just tell us briefly what the kind of things that you want to do before you head back to the men's on time i i firstly uh, by the way, I do whistle. I do a little whistle for for Noodle and Mr. Spidge. Yeah. And they drag my my clothing over to okay. me. Your clothing, your um, your wizard's robe, which you have, which you got, right? You got a wizard's robe, like a proper one. Yeah, I got a proper one. Yeah. Please don't tell me it's ruined. <laughs> no, I was about to say that that's completely <laughs> intact. Um, but all your other, all your other things that you were wearing during the moment of your transformation have been have been hulked out. So, My uh, leather, including leather armor, really. Uh, your leather armor can be repaired. He just walks past you at the same time. And goes, oh, I can repair that just to help be helpful. Um, oh, so thank, he, he thank can, you. He can Peter. It's <laughs> not, not entirely sure what occurred to me to say that as I was walking past you, but I just noticed. I thought I'd just chip in my two my two fennix. Um, so yeah, so he, he says that as he walks past. But your clothes are basically rags now. So you know you're gonna have you basically can put the robe on, but you're gonna be naked underneath for a little while, sir. Um, All right. I mean, again, I'm fairly comfortable. You're pretty with comfortable that. with that, yeah. But you're yeah. gonna have to replace like your your dirty breeches for other dirty breeches, and your rag shirt for another rag shirt. Because um, these things just don't hold together. You basically hulk out. So that's something to note. Um, that when you turn, in, when you use that spell or use that gift to turn into a massive fucking war ferret, a war weasel, or whatever the fuck it is, um, you're going to probably rip open. You're going to hulk out. You're going to you're going to ratty out your clothes. <laughs> so it's just bear, bear that in mind. Well, thank you for telling. Me. <laughs> well, you didn't know, which is why all your clothes are destroyed now, apart from the. So awesome what you're road. saying is is actually in future, take them off. Uh, I'm not saying take them off get or naked. don't take them off. I mean, get naked or not. I mean, it looks pretty cool. It's a pretty cool fucking cinematic moment of you like ratting out through your clothes and turning to a big fucking ferret. I know, but I don't need to. I don't want to. I don't want to get my Bruce Banner in the original TV show never got stripped down. He just like ripped everything he owned all the time constantly. He spent more money there. Uh, that's why I don't want to have to repair my leather armor every time. Yeah, that you might want to take bad. off and put into a neat pile, but the rest of the clothes, yeah. you don't worry about it. It's fine. You don't wear underpants anyway, so it's fine. For, for a second there, Tom, I thought you were going to say sweatpants. <laughs> yeah, ratty just <laughs> Am I going to have to buy some sweatpants? <laughs> that he's only allowed to wear sweatpants. Expandable waistler. It's the only thing that will expand with his fur. Yeah, he's a big fucking war I mean, on sweatpants. I mean, <laughs> is basically Hulk colors. So. Yeah, it's, it's basically it's Hulk green. Did anybody else think it was weird that whenever Bruce Banner turned into the Hulk, so mysteriously he was always wearing purple slacks? Is that me? Because he was sometimes he was wearing all kinds of different colors, and then he just turned into purple slacks. It was, Pretty sh it was a bit confusing, wasn't it? It's was like, wait a minute, hey, time out. He wasn't wearing those slacks a minute ago. It's a small point, but it's something that stuck with me clearly since childhood. Um, <laughs> Yeah, right. Thank you. Okay, cool. So I'm glad that we cleared that up one up. So, um, Ratty, what do you want to do apart from that? So Noodle and Mr. Speech uh, obediently like, like scamper off and grab you. They look at your rags. They sort of hold them up between them and they just drop them and shake their heads. And they just go and get the robe and drag that over to you. And they just give oh, it I'm gonna, I'll sort of, as I'm pulling on my robe, I'll sort of wander over to the... What are the remains of the leash master? Um, or you can see uh, the hat you've already is the hat. I think you nicked that already, didn't you? Do you want to nick the hat? I did. I think just to wind him up. Didn't yeah, you pissed I? him off. Yeah, so you still got the hat yeah. on. In fact, you were naked with just a hat on. <laughs> That's basically what you're. Yeah, you, so you can keep your hat on. <laughs> yeah, so you've still got the hat. You got the and I didn't use that hat to cover up. No, no, no. <laughs> you just wore the hat. 
with just bravery. enjoying the the the, <laughs> the, the, the evening, the evening bay. summer breeze. Okay, yeah. so uh, so you got the hat on the floor. There is he's still got this robe, um, which is sort of mangled, a bit musty, um, but weirdly everything else apart from it, like literally blew up into dust. But the only thing that didn't was the hat he was wearing and the robe that's now crumpled on the floor. Um, his sword was dissolved into nothingness and the staff that was next to him is also gone too. Um, but the robe is still intact. Um, what do you want to do, sir? Um, I'm going to hold out my hand. Because mm -hmm. I sort of figured out, I can sort of sense magical vibes, right? Yeah. So I'm going to sort of just sort of... Okay. And I have to do that noise. Make a, will, make a willpower test plus 20. Uh, oh, to get here the... we go. Here we go with oh, the old... Here we go. I'm plusing 20, dude. It's a whole new game. It's a whole new world. You got just, just five from the teddy. And quite no, you don't, you don't have the teddy special anymore. That's gone now. It's uh, past midnight. That, yeah, I feel, I feel that we actually got you, a lot of... You we we milked that one. You pushed that <laughs> further than I was comfortable with. was one of the best power-ups ever, ever, ever given to <laughs> <laughs> That is a 42, which surely must be a pass, sir. 42, yeah, I must, yeah. Yes, it is. Maybe pass, you've yeah. broken the cycle of hundreds. Maybe this is the time. Uh, okay, so you, you put your hand out, and it feels it feels rather powerful. This is a definitely a magical uh, cloak robe thing. Well, it's actually, it's a cloak. It's not a robe, so it's a hooded cloak. Um, it's a magic, it has got a great magic in it. Um, it doesn't feel like naughty bad magic. It just feels like it's magical. So, naughty bad magic. Yeah, which is your, your, your appraisal of his sword and staff was naughty bad magic. This doesn't feel like naughty bad magic. This just feels like really magical magic. How does but magic? It's... Quick question: How does magic feel to you? Because you're intuitive. So when you feel something magical, so we'd like to. I mean, I don't magic. really think I should say on the stream. It's it's. Uh... You get a little a little aroused, do you? Is that right? <laughs> 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 you a little, Tinge. Little magical semi, do you? So, it's yeah. all right. No, no. no. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to say it just feels ticklish. It feels yeah. ticklish. As opposed to pinch. Yeah. And pinchy is a bit like, oh, no, no, bad naughty magic. It feels a bit pinchy. This is a bit tickly, which is nice. Okay, so it feels it feels yeah. nicely soft and tickly. Like, it's quite nice. Tickly. tickly. Yeah, and, but, like, bad magic does feel like my nipples are being pinched. Yeah, so it's a bit pinchy. Okay, cool. So this is yeah. not pinchy. This is quite tickly. Um, so you think it's probably safe to touch, wear, or... Or use, and from what you glean, because you're not, you know, you're not a fully fledged wizard, but clear, clear, clearly, sorry, <laughs> clearly, geez, my mouth just jackknifed. Clearly, um, the magical cloud, the sort of huge mist fog thing that erupted, possibly could have come from this, the whatever's magic is in this cloak. You don't know the properties of it, um, but that's possibly one of the one of the effects this robe has, because uh, that that seemed like a spell that you. You're not familiar with this spell, but it seemed like a, you know, some the kind of thing that wizards would do, right? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so... Um, I'm going to sort of... Um, I'm going to pull it off the corpse. <laughs> well, it's it's pull it out of the, the pile of dust. <laughs> it's pretty much... Oh, is it a pile? Did he turn it to pile of dust? Yeah, he just went, what a world, what a world. I'm going to hold it up and I'm going to go... Say, Oi, um, young master, tiny boy. So you, tiny boy's currently you. like tiny boy's currently head over heels inside a a chest. His little legs <laughs> banging inside. Pete, can you use your hand for a second, please, mate? Um, oh, uh, he's he's literally like like this inside a chest, <laughs> and his little his little feet are like dangling out. And he's sort of, right, his little feet sort of kicking with excitement. They are, they're kicking with excitement <laughs> as he's furring around. He's sort of screwed. It's, it's one of those. Yeah, cartoon ahead. moments where I'm just tossing out plates and yeah. covering <laughs> yeah, useless yeah, exactly. stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's just like, looking for good things. Yeah, he's already like kind of, you've already seen him like Scrooge McDuck his way through like a barrel of assorted stuff, and he just like dives <laughs> through it and then pops up again and, and does like this kind of swan dive into another chest. So yeah, his little legs are like kicking around like that. Um, that's really cool. I like that. Um, uh, so Teddy, you hear that? You and you think it's aimed at you, or it could be the rat? You're not entirely sure. Tiny what? boy, wait, little I'm busy. Busy. What's going on? <laughs> young master, young master, young master Teddy Ruxpin. Teddy, <laughs> uh, oh, I found anything nice yet, Neil. Sorry, mate. Have I found anything nice yet in here? Um, make a, a quick test, please. That's an initiative roll, sir. I'm about to give you something nice. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. 
He doesn't trust you, apparently. <laughs> no, I'm just playing the character. Uh, 80. Oh, come on, you stupid. That's, that's going to be no, a I have, I... Hmm. What? No, it's not. It's not, it's not a fail anyway. What, 80? Yeah, my initiative is 80 something. No, it's not. 73. 80. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you're right. You're just Sorry. artificially <laughs> raising your already massive initiative. Yes, you? yes, yeah, he, he is. Oh, well, it is 83. It is 83. You've just not updated it on here. Just keep it, boy. Is it 83? Is it, is it really 83? Yeah, he's never updated it. All oh, right, fine. Okay, fuck you. <laughs> so, okay. So, um, all right, I'll do it by pen. I'm not even going to do it nicely. I'm just going to do this. 83, and then, and then put a little unhappy face that I had to change your life. <laughs> All right, so it's 83, okay, fine. So, um, yeah. Milk. No, no. So, so, you, okay, so you sort of, you have found like a pouch of something, this jingles, and as you pick it up in your hand, you hear this, and you sort of, your little legs are dangling, uh, sort of kicking around, you sort of, you sort of scoot back up again, and you sort of turn around, and you go, what? And your eyes are massive like saucers, because you've got like gold blust at the moment, <laughs> and you're like, what? <laughs> like that. <laughs> and he's just holding this robe out in front of him. Um, is, it, is, it, is it fancy? Yeah, it's pretty, it's musty. I reckon I reckon this might be a little certain aid to your sneaky skills, young mm. young lad, you <laughs> cheeky young witter snapper. You might have to uh, put a hem in it. <laughs> yeah, it's got a train to it. It's like, yeah. it's, like it's like it's like a wedding right. dress. <laughs> it's, it's, it is a bit big right now. You do look like you're about to get married, but. Um, but oh, you know, it doesn't, mag it doesn't mag magically shorten or anything like that. There is, a, it's no, got it a, you know, it, it's got a certain magicalness to it that I think just feels like you're a kind of thing. All right, give me, give me, give me. <laughs> Your eyes get even bigger as you realize it's like a magical thingy. And you scan for it, you start bouncing over your hands jingling with this bag, and you swipe <laughs> the robe and put it on. And the robe is now basically, it's like the, it's like the kind of cloak that you're wearing. But the train goes back a few feet like that. <laughs> so now you've got this sort of like this. Yeah. This um, little... is, is it a trip hazard? Uh, it's definitely a trip hazard. You might have to take a risk test every time you do anything. <laughs> you, you, you might have. You might have to. You, you might have to fold the uh, back end over your shoulders and get a couple of brooches. Is what we're saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll figure out some mantles for this, mate. Right? Yeah. And yeah. um, you notice that the brooch itself has this re really unusual symbol, and there's two little sort of like. There's two little buttons, like within the button itself. So there's a brooch on either side. One has like the head um, of what looks like a mole kind of creature, and the other one has uh, this weird sort of like marking, which you don't really understand. Um, there's two little buttons either side there. Oh, buttons! I was going to ask Ratty how it works. I'm still going to ask Ratty how it works. What, mm. what do I do? What does it, it do? How does it do it? Mate, I got no idea whatsoever. I just, you know, it seemed to work for him. What, you know, what? What did he do with it? I don't know. He probably pressed one of the buttons. Um, right. it out, press a button. That's what I say. Uh, <laughs> in the tent. Right. <laughs> if in doubt, have a fiddle. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> if in doubt, Try it out. <laughs> well, that's a little. That's a little little poem for you. <laughs> Give it, okay. world. All right. Sure. That's worthy. It's worthy of a t-shirt. Oh, oh, have a fiddle with one of the buttons. All right. Is he gonna press? Which you gonna press? The left button or the right button? If it's on, a on riddle, the... have a fiddle. <laughs> He's not gonna stop. Is he? <laughs> no, it's not. No. <laughs> which which button are you gonna press? <laughs> Sorry, one was a mole and one was a what? Well, one was some sort of kind of mole creature thing. The other one was some kind of like cloudy thing. You're not entirely sure. Yeah, I'll we'll push the cloudy button. That sounds like the, the okay. obvious. Where's the cloud push. button? This, and it just goes, <laughs> and this like massive kind of farting noise happens, and all around you is this very thick pea super that envelops everybody apart from Blue, who just goes, "Oh, for fuck's sake!" <laughs> and just keeps walking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and now you're enveloped in the mist that you saw beforehand. The difference is that you can see shapes in the mist. So you start seeing like Ratty who starts going, well, I don't know what Ratty says actually, but you're starting to fumble around. Quince now like falls over the Archaeos to go stems back up again. And neither, you can see both of them like silhouettes of them and they can't really see what they're doing. You can't see detail on the body, but you can definitely see the outline of them. So you know exactly where they are. 
Um, what do you do, Ratty and Clem? What do you say? There's a huge mist that just erupted around you. Uh, uh, that, uh, that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> now, first time, first time for everything. <laughs> oh, we're such a fart-based party. Yeah, <sighs> well, okay, but I, th I think I'm just going to, uh, what's it, sit down and wait for it to clear. <laughs> What about you, Tom? I mean, um, I mean, I, I might just ask, I'm going to have that back off you, actually, young master, <laughs> uh, young master T Teddy, you little pain in the arse. Get back in that chest. Um, <laughs> I'll push the other button and see if it, it. I'll just hang around. You, you push the other button, and uh, as quickly as it as it came, the cloud dissipates. And uh, actually, nice. just like literally fly, flies off. So basically, what you have is a cloak of uh, Mystic Mist. Um, it's a level two spell, uh, which you can cast. Well, I didn't, I'm not going to tell you how many times you can cast it per day. Um, but you can Get cast it. Um, one button activates it, the magic in it. The other button seems to like dissipate it, or, or di like dispel it. Um, and it is, uh, it basically is effective up to. I think it's like a, was a diameter of something like 20 yards or 12 yards, I think it is. So it's a fair amount. So it can, can literally swallow all, like, five of you up last time in this kind of, like, kind of circle that you had last time or like that. So it's pretty effective. That nobody can see in it uh, and people can't see into it. Um, you can get the vague outline of, pe of people inside it, but you can't tell details of whom is whom. So if there was three oh, okay. people... So say if there was two bad guys and ratty uh, three people inside the mystic mist with you you could see three shapes we wouldn't necessarily know who whom is whom okay but they can't see each other and they, but can't, they see can't see each other and they can't see you so you have an advantage okay. slightly a uh, slight advantage sweet yes yeah, so that's a that's a magical that's a magical robe of mystic mist um yeah that's it really. so eventually this thing and a bag of jangly things and a bag of jangly things which might be money um, so, so you've got a bag of jangly things as well. Uh, okay, so that's your done, sir. And Pete, that's kind of you doing as well. Uh, Quint. Well, I'll look in the bag, to be honest. Is there anything? Was it, oh, yeah, there's, a, the shit, there's a shit ton of cash in there. A shit ton of cash. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So, you're, yeah, you're, your little ears prick up and your little hairs on the back of your feet uh, just like go really straight for a second. Um, right. Now Quint. we need to go get money out of the monks as well. I know, right? Cheap skates. All right. Mm. <laughs> so, Quint, what are you up to, sir? Um, I am trudging off to find the um, penguin that bolted because oh, it got right. the badly injured one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Okay, so um, after um, after about five ten minutes, you do. I mean, uh, Blue's just wandered off, so she's uh, Dell's wandered off, so she's gone. Eventually, you do mm. find Rice. Rice is fine; you're not really injured apart from a little bloody nose, bloody beak. Sorry, um, but you manage to like calm her down, and you, you you although she's familiar with you, she's not doesn't know you that well. But she's mm. reasonably calm around you because you've seen the other guys and how they approach it, and you've sort of copied yeah. that. And eventually, you manage to get her. You manage to get like the the, the, the bridle on her um, that's still on her, and you manage to take that. And she's she bucks a little bit, but eventually she calms down, and you lead her back to the party. And the second she sees Ratty, she's like super calm, and she starts trotting over on her little her little flappy feet. Um, and as she comes up to Ratty, and nuzzles him right in the back, and starts nuzzling into him quite uh, quite a lot. Uh, you get nuzzled. By an enormous fucking war penguin, um, you see that Pete is still like you know, tummy deep into a chest, mm. and is still rifling through whatever's <laughs> left in the tent. But he's now wearing this huge long wedding dress like train, mm. uh, this cloak thing, um, and you see that Scooter has managed to calm down. Is now riding Cake actually. Cake looks a bit battered, but is still standing. Um, mm. Scooter is sort of like riding Cake, and his now goes, um, "What do we do about the racist?" And points down <laughs> towards uh, Ziggy's body. <laughs> Oh yeah, the racist. Oh <laughs> right. me. Oh no, it's like a it's like a roller coaster. Now I'm sad again. Oh <laughs> like my... turn into a weasel, I'm happy, <laughs> I'm sad. <laughs> as 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 a as a fellow knight knight, I, I think we should take him back to the monastery for a a hero's burial, even though he did insult me rather badly. <laughs> He was rude to everyone, but he did it so well. Oh, <laughs> he, he was sort of brave, and he, you know, he, he he occasionally did really good moves with his shield, but oh, he was awful. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, 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 su I suggest we load him up. Uh, Mas Master Halfling, um, if there are any um, books in there, we, we may want to take them back to the monastery as well. We don't, we don't want the, any sort of book that this creature had just floating around. They need to be properly dealt with. Oh, I don't, sorry, my eyes don't see books. Uh, you now, you now, by the way, you also have two books secretly stashed into your pile that look really fancy. I'm <laughs> just saying. <laughs> you definitely have two Excellent. books. I appreciate that. Right, it's okay. You do have two fancy looking books in your, so please put them down. Yeah, nice. your yeah. Necronomicon. No, necron <laughs> Necronomicon. <laughs> can you please roll, uh, can you please actually um, roll another initiative test, please? Yeah. Uh, Years. No, what's going on there? Years. Years. Well, where's the dice gone? Oh. You moved my dice. You moved now. They're here. I haven't tied the dice. I haven't rolled them yet. Your dice were reflecting. That wasn't a roll. You haven't rolled. No, I know. I just said I, I, I ought to sit there and oh, see this tree's in the way. 74. That's uh, also uh, annoyingly a success, right? Yep. Okay. You also find um, uh, there's, a, there's a bony hand still left of one of the half animated corpses that didn't get quite fully animated so it's actually still intact um and on one of the one of the hands of this like what looked to be like it's some kind of knight in shitty like rusted chainmail armor in the tent um there is a gold ring with an azurite and bloodstone inlay um and it's sort of just like on its hand on its bony one of its bony fingers uh which you can you can sort of do that thing of, oh, let me kiss thy hand, no, lovely to meet you, and then just like pull the finger up the thing off of your mouth. So or it's you... a gold ring with azurite, what? Sorry. Uh, it's basically a gold ring with a bloodstone gem, and um, azurite and bloodstone gem inlay. It's a fancy fucking nice. ring, dude. It's probably worth a few, <laughs> few coin. It's worth a few car francs, do you know what I mean? I'm going <laughs> to wander over to him and, and sort of go, woo, and sort of do my little handy gesture over um, the ring. Okay. Just checking. I'm um, Ziggy. Like now, I've got this skill. Right? Yeah. I'm just checking it out. Everything, Check <laughs> everything, all the time, everywhere. Yeah. Does that cost you anything, Tom? Give me that cupcake. Ooh. I'm going to do a willpower test every time. I believe. <laughs> okay. I only, yeah, sorry, the the sorry, sorry, Pete. What, you, you go first. I, mate. Said, I, I said it only costs you your dignity to make that noise. But Pretty much. <laughs> All right, folks. You've pretty much ransacked everything there is to ransack. I mean, most of the yep. other, all the skeletons are pretty much wasted. Um, there are some rusted weaponry they're all carrying, but none of it's serviceable. It's all pretty shit and pretty break if you want to use it properly. Um, so, what do you want to do, folks? Rice and Cake are sort of back in action. Scooter and Quint have helped uh, Ziggy's body onto the back of Cake. Um, Rice is back there looking pretty decent as well. So, what do you want to do, folks? Uh, well, I think I'm going to give uh, Lord Krell's corpse a swift kick and then get on a penguin. <laughs> yep, you do that. So you, go over to that. you sort of you sort of put football pump his head over in between two trees and just sort of do a little fist pump as it bounces. Very off satisfying. Yeah. And then you hop on behind, uh, hop onto cake behind uh, behind Scooter, um, and the body of, of Ziggy is sort of behind you as well. So you're you're basically over here. That leaves Cake to be ridden by. Um, uh, ratty and also the the coward. <laughs> yes. Cool. I'm, I'm getting on cake because I like my cake. There you go. All right, folks. Um, so you're gonna head back towards uh, La Maison Tell, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. With, with, yeah. with the chaotic I mean, I think, yeah. Yep. I've got to say, I think is we should have a little midnight party, a little midnight snackaroo, and then. <laughs> Straight to bed for me. I'm knackered. <laughs> okay. what? Bouncing around, like having big visions, bouncing around, doing weird spells, turning into a giant weasel monster. Bloody knackering. It's been <laughs> full on, hasn't it? Yeah. Okay. We, we've had quite a time. You've had quite a time. But... So I'm going to use um, rice and cake. If you want to come over to the the, the village map as well, well, I may as well tell macro map. Uh, me. As we come over to this place, so I'm going to sort of walk you through the, the records, really. Um, so, so both rice and cake, are, you know, you're riding both rice and cake. You come to the main path. You see the utter devastation that has affected uh, Le Maison Tal. Um, obviously, you left at the height of the battle, um, and uh, you know for the right reasons and everything. But still, it was a lot, there was a lot of uh, a lot of awfulness that's happening. Uh, most of the the hovels and the the little 
little village houses have been either ripped apart, destroyed, or just like literally burst through by the hordes of skeletons. You can see bodies of people everywhere. Um, <coughs> a lot of the villagers were dragged into the street or killed where they slept or what have you or were hiding. Um, the blacksmithery is still weirdly upright, although most of it's been, well, a lot of it's been damaged actually, but it's still sort of like intact. And scooters, you see Scooter like hurrying over there. He jumps down off rice, hands the, um, the bridle to, uh, to Cl uh, Quint and sort of runs over and goes, oh no, like that. And he sort of like runs over to his, his precious blacksmithery and dives inside and he's sort of standing there, actually standing just on the outside, it's been caved in. Half the actual smithing materials, like the uh, anvil and whatnot, uh, seem to be serviceable, but the actual building itself is completely fucked. Um, you see the main center building where you have like archers posted has been completely obliterated. The fire has engulfed all of it. Uh, as rice and cakes sort of are slowing, they can sort of sense, feel the sense of despair and and death around them, and even they're sort of not like make hooting or honking as they often do uh, as they're walking along. Um, they've been quite um, quite well mannered actually. Um, then you see ahead of you a sort of more troubling sight. La Maison Tell, the palisade around La Maison Tell has been, um, has caught fire in various places. Uh, over here and here and here. The main gates have been completely ripped apart. Uh, the actual building itself, uh, although still intact, you can see that all of the windows have been smashed. Uh, the main doors have been completely ripped open. Um, although you, you do see, think you see activity w from within. Um, which may be a good or a bad thing, I'm not entirely sure really at the moment. Um, but of uh, the presence of skeletons, you can see nothing. Um, as you make your way into the courtyard, uh, uh, you can see that there are people starting to emerge from the smoke, the smoky uh, entrance to um, the Maison Tell itself. Um, what do you want to do? You two are, uh, actually, if you're going to try and clear this map up a little bit, which I totally should have done in the last two weeks, but I haven't been bothered to do. I'm just going to clear this up a little bit. So I'm just going to get rid of all the shit. Um, do, 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 you're all cool. there. What, what you do, what's you doing that? Should we go into narrative then? <clears throat> yes, please. What do you want to do, folks? Uh, must, must, Master Ratigan, um, uh, as far as these people know, we, we, we left here like like cowards. You, you may wish to present the hat. <laughs> <laughs> as it gets oh! shot out of your hand. <laughs> okay. I'm going to stand up. I like this idea. So I'm gonna stand up. Hold on, hold on, hold on, guys. All the skeletons drop down dead. I think they may put two and two together, right? Well, They're not that. You fast. do have a history of fucking things up. I think the, the rat might have been um, something here, actually. You little lad. Sorry, little lad. I like the rat's idea. I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna stand up, <laughs> praying that my cloak doesn't fall off. <laughs> probably, does. Yeah, probably, probably does. Probably does. Probably does. Yeah. I, I'm gonna yell. Behold, the the headgear of the flat <laughs> what did this to all of us? <laughs> well, we that, vanquished him. At, and... that, at that moment, Blue joins you, says Fleck, and a huge breeze goes past, and your cloak just billows open, and your tackle falls out as you stand there. <laughs> Behold, like that. <laughs> and then you carry on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, for I for we vanquished him, and we brought back his hat. And you'll notice all the skeletons have fallen over and they're all gone now. That was because of what we did. Also, um, we got, we, we need, oh no, oh Ziggy, we need to, we need to deal with Ziggy. And, uh, oh. Wow. Yeah. You're, you're, you're at, can you please make an acting test for you pretending to <laughs> like Ziggy? What is an acting test? a minus on that. Yes. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's it's not no, it's not. There's an actual acting test. It's fellowship. Um, it's I not have, entirely I convincing. Have I have, have blabber. blabber. Yeah, you can, make, play, you can add plus 10 to your fellowship roll. That's good, because my fellowship, I think, is really awful. Really bad. Really bad. Oh, 25 I rolled. All right, you rolled 25. Okay. So I the, think that, yeah, I pass. Yeah. So, the, so um, uh, the the sort of gu the only guy that you're talking to is the only person that stepped forward. The sort of like woodsman that you vaguely remember the name of, just goes. He, he turns around and just shouts back, goes, "Oi, the idiots are back! One of them's blubbering like well, I don't know, like an idiot, but I, I think they may have helped us. They might be responsible for the for the victory and all that." And the dwarves go, "Are there any more skeletons?" And he goes, no, it's just the idiot. So, like I said, one of them was blubbering like a baby. He goes, oh, that's ratty, right? <laughs> okay, and they sort of like get through it and they all start, people start emerging. 
uh, from the smoke. And the, the building is still, it's kind of on fire, but you see people rushing around. Now the smoke is clearing quite a lot. You do see into the building. And there are definitely people still alive. However, there are many, many bodies on the floor. You see Bardak and Gimbrin, the two only, apparently only remaining dwarves from the 90, what is it, 90 odd dwarf colony originally uh, are still there. They're battered and bruised and covered in lacerations, holding their weapons, um, breathing heavy. Uh, you also see Dr. Dasher and Wavy Davy, who stepped forward. Both of them uh, miraculously have survived. Uh, and uh, Dasher and Davy kind of run up to you. They both give you all hugs. Well, they don't give the rat a hug, but they give uh, <laughs> t they give Ratty a hug. And then they stop and they point and they look at um, Teddy and goes, uh, "Oh, uh, yeah, sh I, I, you survived. Well, that's something." And then they give Ratty another hug and goes, "Well done, lad." And then Doctor uh, and then Wavy Davy comes up and goes, "Yes, we were all kind of rooting on you. We thought you'd all turn tailed and run because you're a bunch of fucking cowards." No offense, Ratty. And he just looks at Teddy. Why do you hang around with these idiots? <laughs> and he goes, but look, you, you seem to have done it. That's great news. So is everything taken care of? Nice hat, by the way. Um, I, I, I fear not everything is taken care of, unfortunately, Master Bard. Um, and at uh, that point, he looks and goes, what, what the fuck are you? <laughs> you make a we've already though. done this. <laughs> oh, yeah. felt we've already done this, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, he knows, yeah he knows you're a bit ugly. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, there we are. Yeah, yeah. That felt really Two episodes ago, man. <laughs> yeah, we've done that. Every time. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, sorry, every time, he, every time he looks at you, he just goes, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. We've already been introduced. Sorry, my man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay. Um, uh, must, must, uh, must, master halfling. Um, you, you know, you, you know, you set the, uh, the, 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 uh, the suit of armor um, to to find and destroy all skeletons. Um, it it hasn't changed its uh, its 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 understanding of the world since that. So it's now going to be going out trying to look for any skeletons at all. I suggest you recall it. Why is that a bad thing? Yeah, man. I don't know what that's it's going to do. That's a fucking TV <laughs> spin off right there, Clint. <laughs> Dude, come on. New franchise, baby. This is fucking Star it's Wars. A, it's Marvel a new movie. franchise. MCU. MCU. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lonely armed man <laughs> with a tin heart looking for love. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> okay. Oh, look, if you're so desperate to sort it out, you have it, and I'll throw the ring at, at, uh, at Clint. Okay, please make a catch test. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, you do that. As you as you do that, um, Jean Louis steps forward and goes, <clears throat> "Mes amis, uh, how happy I am to see all of you alive. Uh, if you are going to be using not using that Iron Man, he could perhaps." And turns around, uh, maybe help us with some reparations to uh, this community. And he like raises an eyebrow, and he's all, "Oh yeah, sure, it'll cost you." <laughs> okay. Wow! Wow! All right. All right, Teddy, if you're gonna say that, man, you have to make a mega fellowship test, dude. Okay. It's it's not it's a coercion test or it's an intimidation. I can't tell or it's a bullshit test. It's one of the it's one of the bullshit, bullshit test. Absolutely bullshit test. Bullshit test. Seventy four no, is a, a massive failure. Um, at that, it's not a massive failure. It's a big, don't it's a big think failure. Teddy's got bad stats. Okay. Anytime you want, to, anytime you want to deal with the monks from now on, the monks that survived, you have to do it with minus ten fellowship because you just try to intimidate Mwah. the head of a tall, tall or right monastery. Just saying. <laughs> um, so that's yeah. minus ten. Must, must, Master Teddy. Um, although, although, uh, you you may have a head for business, you don't have a head for compassion, and you you did throw me the ring. Yeah, you um, have the ring, uh, Ankrin. Yeah. Uh, Lord, 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 Lord Monk. Um, I I believe you can control this creature if you have this ring. Um, so I would uh give it to you if, if on the small condition that we may bury our um our, our knight friend um in your tombs for he deserves an honorable place to rest at that point ziggy's corpse falls off cake and just like slumps <laughs> down in front like this oh ziggy no <laughs> oh trying to stay on cake <laughs> um blue and fleck have sort of uh, just did a little wave of the hand and just walk past everybody and they're clearly just going to go and find a bed and just like lie in it, basically, whether it's <laughs> or not. Um, Jean-Louis steps forward and goes, Mes amis, uh, la maison telle is in your debt as am I. Please, let us find and uh, heal your wounds, tend to you, and rest up. Spend the, this part of the summer with us. Rest up, and if you would be so kind as to ask one more favor from you to help us rebuild what we have lost. 
At that, you also see the dwarves, uh, Gimbrin and also um, Bardak, who step forward. The only, apparently, only survivors. They, they, I'm going to break into narrative, folks. That's okay. Cool. So the dwarves tell you that they're the only two survivors. The whole of the mine company have been wiped out. Um, that a lot of the fighters there, a lot of the monks have been killed as well. Probably about like half of them got wasted. Um, mm -hmm. They put up a brave fight. Uh, Doc Dasher and Wavy Davy managed to actually s to keep everybody in the infirmary alive. Um, but the poor family in the corner over here, if you remember, Pete, I'm looking at you, that you didn't come to the aid of, um, unfortunately, was wiped out, and the whole family was wiped out there. Um, Gunther You're Vernon, saying it like it's my fault. Kind of was. <laughs> Gunther <laughs> Vernon, <laughs> Gunther, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> he made a difficult choice to sacrifice <clears throat> the lives of you for the lives of the many. Did he, though? Exactly. Did he, though? Did he? All right, so, um, anyway, the Vernickers uh, were actually all alive. They're a pretty hardy bunch. Uh, the ones that survived the initial farmhouse. Um, and um, uh, the, the father and I think the mother as well, and the two kids, and also the grandfather, Gunter Wernick, uh, all survived the melee. They're a pretty tough stock. And they said they're going to go back to their farm and basically try and patch themselves up and patch their farm up and rest the dead and also rest their own dead who are still they're still there, I guess. Um, unless they're corpses that are just you just obliterated. Yeah, let's make one of the skeleton archers you killed the grandmother. Okay, so anyway, so apart from that, they were going to sort of look after and for, for farm. Uh, Alan Gascoigne and sadly was killed. Um, he was there actually in defence of uh, some of the monks that were, were trying to protect the library. And you actually do find later his corpse is, is was left outside the door, which was he barred himself with his own sword, um, and he was sort of cut to ribbons really. But he his last sort of grand gesture uh, was to protect the library with the monks inside, whose whose lives are protected because of his heroism. Uh, hopefully, he will find peace and perhaps even re reunite with the spirit of his dead wife, who died at Frugalhofen, if you remember. Um, but yeah, he's been laid to rest, and we, he's going to be laid to rest as well. Are um, they going to do sort of like a big sort of Star funeral Wars fucking thing? Yes. Yeah, in basically. Terms of the like, Jedi, like, basically. Like that. I was imagining pyre fires. There's a lot, pyres. yeah, a lot of pyres around everywhere, and and, and a few of them are looking pretty pretty cool and cinematic. In fact, they deliberately wait till it's darker just to add ambience. Um, and Ziggy also has been given his own sort of like funeral fire, uh, funeral pyre. Um, and they ask him, uh, do you, does he have any friends uh, amongst you to call on? All of you sort of look at each other, sort of look down at the ground <laughs> and begrudgingly <laughs> step forward. Um, eventually, and you all sort of do attend his funeral, as it were. Uh, although nobody seems particularly like... You all start looking for snacks halfway through, you know, not particularly. You're a little affected, I guess. We didn't like that affected by it. No, he's gone there. Um, yeah, so we're going to go very much into narrative at the moment. Um, the clean-up of La Maison Tell, and really what it is that you want to do, because you've just earned a shitload of XP. Uh, and well, also, how much XP have we earned? <clears throat> well, first things first, all of you for the defeat of the Leash Master have gained a fate point. Um, yes! And as, as Sad Neil is so oft to try and take them from it, I thought it was, I thought it was fair that I add a fate point on Sad Neil for you all to take. Um, so I'm going to... Where is Blue usually? She's over here in the corner, right? It's a shame we don't have a... An animation of Sad Neil like puking the fate points. I can back probably up. do. I can probably do that actually. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. I well, I, do that. Are, are, there, are there just fresh fate points? And this isn't this just like going back to McDonald's for yeah, seconds? Basically, like, here's, like, here's, here's the first one. Who wants to clean it? Blah. Okay, that's the first one. <laughs> There you go, the next one. That was mine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pete, don't get greedy, man. That's, 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 for, that's, for, that's for Tommy. That's for Tom over there. Okay, and the last one, if you're ready, Tom, that's, that's for you, sir. Um, Hang on, how many have I got here? This is. How many do you have? I've I have, got... You got two. I've not been killing you near as much as I should be. I think you got three now. Yes. Um, well, why does mine. What does mine smell of carrots? <laughs> and the last one, begrudgingly, <laughs> is to the rat. Blah! There you go. So that's me throwing the up one, the one. The one time I could have used one, I instead opted to lose some fingers. So Which I thought it was pretty cool. You lost some permanent mm. dexterity points, I believe. Uh, but yeah. That's pretty cool. All right. So um, the repair of uh, La Maison Tell is going to take a while. I mean, you, you basically stay there for a good month. Uh, you rest, you recuperate the first weeks, uh, um, really sort of like helping bury the dead. Mainly it's just recovering from what you've experienced. 
And eventually um, people get organized, Some people from Grunier are summoned, other monks are called for, and within a few weeks, like two, three weeks maybe, a lot more people suddenly turn up and start the clearing of all of the buildings that have been destroyed, and then going into the rebuilding of the area, the retilling of the farm, um, more livestock is bought and brought in. Uh, during that period, as well as resting, uh, you kind of have pretty much free run of um, the uh, of La Maison Tal and the people within it as well. So a lot of the people that were still there, and in fact, you do come across some of the people there, uh, the Vernikis, for instance, occasionally come back into La Maison Tal. Um, Cecil de Chomley, uh, you do see neither hide nor hair of. You do not yeah, know where he's gone. <laughs> he is, he's just dis, disparu, as I say in Bretonia. Yeah. Um, but the other people are sort of there at your disposal, as is the library, and as is La Maison Tal, um, the other bits and pieces of it. You're all healed up, obviously, to your maximum wounds and strength, and you all come back fighting fit. Um, but what do you want to do in those weeks in between? So, <coughs> I mean, should we just talk about how we're going to spend our XP first? Yeah. And okay. then... So let's go to XP, why not? Um, so you've got the fate point, which all of you got back from the, the killing of uh, the Leash Master, which well done to all of you. Um, beyond that, I'm going to sort of give you for the last chapter of the last few chapters of the game that we haven't done any fate points for. Um, I'm going to say for the, there's four of you that survived out of the possible five. So I'm going to give you 50 each per PC survival. So that's 200. You're going to have to make a rolling note of this, folks. Sorry about that. Um, so that's 200 XP each. Um, <clears throat> on top of that, you, the Vernik has survived, so I'm going to give you an extra 25 for that. Um, the two dwarves survived, that's an extra 25, although it was the only ones that survived. Um, the Iron Man was left, you actually left the Iron Man to help rebuild the La Maison Tal. I'm going to give you another 50 for that, so that's another 100, that's 300 Ooh. so far. Um, I'm going to give you another 100 for the actual death of Kemler. Um, who actually for and also the fighting of it I'm going to give you all another 50 for surviving uh, the, the cloud fight uh, all intact and who actually did, who actually killed it was Blue, Blue that actually didn't. killed it right okay. yeah. Blue gets Blue some extra but we all really <laughs> contributed you yeah, know you, you, get, you get someone <laughs> for contributing but she is the MVP she's the MV elf you know what I mean she's the most valuable elf uh, MVE or whatever, so she'll get additional XP for actually landing the killer blow. But you all get um, a fate point, and I guess that makes about 500 XP, doesn't it? 450. Yeah, 450. Well, let's, yeah, run, let's run it to five for good role playing because they're all good eggs. How about that? Make it useful. Cool beans. Groovy. So um, if you want to go, if anybody has ideas on how you want to do this, because we are live, um, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and if you want to take it in turns, folks, no particular order, whoever's sort of ready to go first, bearing in mind that there's some limited stock and supplies in La Maison Tal. Uh, they may not have everything that you might desire, but you could, yeah. And you've also got Scooter around, is around as well, of course, to, to have a chat with. Um, Scooter, by the way, if you want to find out what's happened to him, you're most welcome to ask, you uncaring bastards. <laughs> We're, we're busy. We're, hang on. We're, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> How about Scooter? What's happened to his bread and butter? You know, I mean, it's not just all about you, is it? No, sorry, it's fine. Um, so yeah, so who wants to go first? And um, what do you want to say? What do you want to do? Um, um, do you, all right, Clem, were you was that you? You go yeah, ahead. Yeah, you, um, yes. I've I've got okay. Um, so we've I take it we've got a fairly open run of skills or are we following a uh, career path and stuff here no, so, you, so the way it works with my game sir is that you right. can learn a skill of anybody that's willing to teach you for money time and all the rest of it and your own ability depending right. on what it is um yeah. you can follow your career paths by automatically going to the next career if you want to but you have to find a teacher for most things or you can yeah. just start a completely new career it doesn't matter if you want to start a new career you just have to find somebody that is that career or, or has been that career to teach you. For instance, if you wanted to go to the glorious, uh, wonderful, smelly world of a rat catcher, you'd have to work on a rat catcher team with a rat catcher. Um, yeah. For instance, you can't just become a rat catcher because you say so. That's like me yeah. wanting to become president of the world and sorting out all the problems. On a say so, it's not going to happen, Neil. Just grow up. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, but yeah, make a dream. Make a dream. <laughs> hang a dream. Uh, so yes, but you can. Uh, you can def basically. There's a whole bunch of people. There's. Uh, obviously, I've described the mercenaries amongst the Vernikers and such, um, and you also have the monks there as well. In fact, actually, Tom, your you know your your whole religion and, and all that kind of stuff is is going to be potentially very helped because you've got time now to to spend at the Maison Tal and work out well, what you can do with your life. Hang 
on, hang on, hang on, my friend, because well, like, is Klim, have you finished, or are you still? Um, I, I may need a, t a bit of time to consult the books. I've got an idea, but um, okay. yeah, that's only for advancement of okay. of abilities. So, okay, so Neil, I'm guessing that I've kind of because I went through those upgrades, mm -hmm. you know, like Tal kind of like boosted me. Yeah. In advance. I'm guessing that I've kind of spent my. It's almost like my XP are kind of. I'm in debt. I'm in XP oh, you debt. You definitely owe Daddy Tal. This is true. You owe Daddy Tal. Yeah. So I upgraded to level two. Yep. So I'm now a level two hedge wizard. Yep. How much XP does that cost? Um, well, the level two is going to be. It's just going to be a hundred to move up to level two. But okay. So that learn... me down to three fifty. But then you have like uh, a spell, don't you? Two spells you learn or something. There are two spells that seem to. So firstly, I seem to learn an upgrade of the, you know, the flight of. Amar, the the one where you kind of randomly yeah, you turned it into cannonball, didn't you? I cannonballed around the place. Yeah, that's is that like a level one spell or a level two spell? What is that? That's a level one spell. That's a replacing flight. So as opposed to getting flight, you're going to have a thing called cannonball, which is basically like you. It's basically exactly how zero g works. So you can push yourself off or or ricochet yourself off as as if you would do in zero g. Okay, um, but it works as a flight spell. Um, and how many, hang on a second, how many, I should add this to my... It, Flight of Agmar is three, right? Yes. It's still going to be three because you don't, have, you don't have complete control. So as opposed to flight when you can literally choose wherever the hell you want to go, this is cannonball. So you, it works like a flight spell, but it's omnidirectional, it's omnidirectional only if you get purchase on something okay. that you can push off or, rick or knocks against somebody. And okay. It works like a flight spell. And what are the ingredients? Um, it's going to be... Um, what's the ingredient for Ag Flight of Agma? It's a piece of... Um, you know, that... Da yeah. Right, okay. So, uh, uh, there was, it was, so it was a chicken feather, wasn't it? Something like that? Something no, like it's that? like a piece of dandelion seed for that. So, yeah, it could be a chicken feather or like a piece of rubber. Oh, I'm or... going to say a chicken feather. It's going to be a, ch a chicken or some kind of like basic game feather, like a goose feather would do. All right. Chicken feather, I've... game basically. Okay, I've written chicken feather for now because yeah. they're easy enough to get hold of. Um, and then obviously the other big spell that I figured. So that's also how many XP did that cost to that's learn? That's level one, so that'd be a hundred. Okay, so that's taking me down to two fifty, and then. The obvious, the other big spell I learned was the shape shift into a weasel. That's a level is two that spell. spell. Yeah, that's a level two spell. Okay, so what is it? Is the spell literally called like shape shift weasel? Yeah, let's let's name it that. So it's shape shift weasel, or 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 um, greater form weasel, or something like that. Whatever you want to call it, it's fine. Okay. Um, that's going to cost you four magic points. Okay. That's going to be two hundred XP. So basically, I've got 50 XP left. Yes, you do. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, I because skills cost 100, don't they? So I can't learn any skills right now. Well, the only um, thing you could learn, I guess, is another petty magic spell. And you could probably learn that off one of the monks, maybe, that our magic uses, which they were probably... All right. Well, I will consider that. I will have a... Have a book look. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I will now seed the, the thing to someone else. What's um, Pete gonna learn? What, did, what about you, Pete? Well, I've just got some skills, some stats I'm gonna increase. Okay, I think is, is the obvious answer. So, intelligence, cool, willpower, another wound, and a toughness. Cool. What is your actual? What on. is your career right now? Are you actually just a thief burglar or something? Uh, we, we we created sort of a, a what was it? Master thief level one, basically. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're a master thief now, aren't you? Okay. So you're mm. like a level one master thief. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, but whether or not we, we 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 create a level two or not, Neil, I think we'll discuss that. I think I think not. How we want to I do think, it. I think basically you're a thief and then you're a master thief. I think that's mm -hmm. kind of where it's at. So I think you're you're a master yeah. thief now. That's fine. Okay. Um, and also want to spend some time, obviously, fixing and or getting a new slingshot or trying to work with. Yeah. That's scooter fine. to make a more a more powerful version, maybe. I don't you're know. You're making an augmented. Um, he can try. I can have a little roll mm -hmm. and, and basically lie and then say he didn't do it. Um, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there anything else that you want to do, um, Pete? Have you, no, no, not you really. You it's, that's it. That's all 500 gone. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so that's you leveled up. 
Um, and also, I guess the the rat thing. Hey, rat. Thing. <laughs> Hello. Hello. What about you? Um, You're sort of like, you no. Know, what's going on? What's going on with the rat, man? Um, yeah, okay, I'm still trying to put this together. Um, definitely, um, a plus 10 to weapon strength, and mm -hmm. I've also noticed under my character class, which is bodyguard, yeah. uh, there's a skill here which is a 50% very strong. Is that something you can roll for, no, or is that something you, you get when you first do it? No, you can't okay. learn that. Um, it's, it's innate. Either you, you okay. are very strong or not. Okay, you just start with it. Okay, cool. It's, like, it's, like, it's like when people like either like Celine Dion or they don't. It's like a 25% yeah, okay. chance to like Celine Dion. It's not something you learn to... You don't learn to like Celine Dion. You either, okay. either have that weird apparition to like Celine yeah. Dion or you don't. Basically, that's it. No, that, that's, that's, that's very well illustrated. That's, that's, that's really welcome. good. Yeah. Apologies to anybody that likes Celine Dion. <laughs> 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 right. Okay, so um, that's plus 10 to weapon strength. Mm -hmm. Um... Weapon skill, um, how much sir. is that? Yes, yeah, so weapon skill. Sorry. Um, so that's um, that's fifty, or is that a hundred? That's a hundred, sir. That's a hundred. Okay, so we're now down to four hundred. Mm -hmm. um, I'm quite interested in learning some more rounding out skills that would generally help the party. Okay. Um, I was interested as we have a river running through here. Um, yeah. Is there anybody who um, would actually not be averse to me being, um, or is it a horribly malformed creature who might be able to teach me to swim? Oh, that's interesting. You don't know how to swim. That's laughable. Okay. Um, sorry, did I say laughable? I mean, that's sweet. Why are you so, so mean? <laughs> Why are you so mean to dear Quint? Because Quint and, and Teddy are quite easy targets. So now that, that I guess... Oh, we, should, we should learn to read as well, shouldn't should we? Right here? Well, that, that, <laughs> no, no, you have to make an intelligence test for that one. So. Uh, yeah, you can, you, can teach, you can get somebody to teach you how to swim. That's fine. You're going to have okay. to make an initiative test um, to so okay. we get it. Um, and then you can make several of them. That's fine. Uh, but if you fail okay. all three, then you don't learn how to swim. You, you sink like a rat. Okay. And I take it my webbing doesn't help any. It will do. It'll give you plus 10 to learn how to swim. So plus 10 initially. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Why is that going over there like that? I don't know. Okay. Drop it. Okay. And grab it. And roll it. That's 30. Very good. What's your... Oh, yep. Yep. That's a pass? Yes. Great. So you, did, yeah. you're great. You now have the skill to swim. Okay. Um, you you find out that you're a natural, and with especially with the web feet I mean, and toes. You've got webbed hands. Yeah. Otter boy. <laughs> yeah. So you, you, you basically you doggy paddle. You do really right. good doggy paddling, um, but it's pretty fast. It's like a dog that's like you know a jacked up dog um, of doggy paddling, is how fast you can move. You don't do like front crawl or anything cool. It's a doggy paddle. Um, cool. But it's pretty fast. You can move as fast as you can walk, basically. Um, cool. That's, that's yeah. going to really help me fish. It is, yeah. Fact, do you have fish still? You yes, have, I do. You do? Okay, great. So, yeah, you can now swim and catch fish in a whole new luxurious way. Um, I can proper golem it. Lovely. You turn, you're now basically turning into golem. That's great. All right, so as ugly as sin. Um, okay, anything else that you want to do this time? You've got a whole month to sort of relax and recuperate. Yeah, um, I would like to have a chat with uh, Dr. Dasher if yep. he wants to teach me about um, the healing arts and herb law. Also, um, if I can talk to the head of La Maison Tell, if there are um, any copies of any publications on those two um, skills, so okay. I can further my skill um, once I leave La Maison Tell. Okay, sure. So you approach Dr. Dasher, and he's sort of with Wavy Davey. He's like looking after the recovery of some of the um, some of the more wounded um, uh, fighters of the of Le Tal, defenders of Le Tal. And yeah. you sort of go, um, and Ma Master Dasher, could could I? And he just looks and goes, Oh dear God, no! And then just like slams the door in your face. Um, you have better luck with Jean Louis, who goes, okay. Well, uh, I, I, one of your kind uh, helping humans is in itself such a strange endeavor. But maybe the Ville of Tal is working through you. So, mon oui. And he decides to actually help you. He's going to teach you herb law. Um, okay. Can you read and write? Yes. Good. So he's going to give you a small little, like, booklet. Um, and it's like a kid's booklet. Okay. It's like, um, <laughs> in fact, it's got a picture of this, like, uh, Uncle Herbie. who's like this, this cartoon herb on the front cover. <laughs> and Uncle Herbie tells Amazing. you rather patronizing, really simple, simplified ways of bad, good eat, don't eat. Yeah. Um, kind of rules of things that you should and shouldn't take. Like, there's a nightshade that looks suspiciously like this other particular flower, which has got healing properties, but this is nightshade, and that's the thing that will actually heal you. Things like that. Cool. It's really basic stuff. 
But okay. yeah, you can learn that. So if you want to make an initial, uh, actually you don't need to because you're just going to spend a month there. After about a month of learning the herb law with this little handy booklet, um, which you can keep, um, you do you do learn basic herb law. So you can identify plants, you know the properties yeah. and you know what they're used for. So that's a herb cool. law that you would learn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Teddy's, Teddy's, Teddy's starting to get a little worried at sort of towards the end of that month because he knows he's got that sort of timeline before the those knights start coming after him. So he's starting <laughs> well, yeah. wor- worrying about how to get back to the uh, the Empire now to, to okay. deliver the Ark. Like where do I actually meet with um, Tracker? Yeah. Exactly. Did we actually agree a meeting point or anything like that? I can't no, remember. you didn't. No, you didn't. Um, well, you sort of did, actually. Yeah, there was... Um... There was a pub, um, which is up the Reich. Um, it's actually quite close towards Delbretz, um, somewhere around the outdoor fee area. Is, is, is the like, maps around and stuff that I can study to figure out sort of the best way to get there? From yeah, where you we do. Are. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, it's called the Hooded Man Pub. And the Hooded Man Pub is where you're supposed to meet him. Um, and he, he did give you quite a lot of time to get there. He gave you like a good two months. So well, maybe like you know, yeah, like eight weeks more or less, seven eight weeks, and he he's mm. he's got a contact there. He's not going to be there himself, but he's got a contact. No, I imagine he's just sat there waiting for two months for us. No, no exactly, because uh. that would be like just bullshit. So he's just he's basically got a contact there. Will meet you um, somewhere between six to nine weeks time, which you, okay. he said will give you enough time to get the Archaeotica um, back to him. So how far is the trip? Is it from here? It is about a thousand miles. <laughs> it's, like, it's really nice. <laughs> um, so from here, you're gonna have to cross. So if you actually want to come over, can you see the backdrop? Actually, this is like a useful part of the backdrop here. Can you see the backdrop, uh, Pete, on the actual uh, the actual wall itself, like the one that's yeah the yeah. Line thing. Okay, so you wanna get, yeah, if you want to keep going, pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back, away from the table. Um, the crossing where you see the word Pavaron. That's you're sort of south of Patheron. There's a little, there's a sort of like place you can, you can go up. The, the oh, yeah. river breaks up. That's the Frugalhorn Valley, and if you go through there somehow, if you go through the mountain range, you'll end up quite close to Nuln, and then from Nuln mm-hmm. you go north by another like three, four hundred uh, miles, uh, and you can take canal boats. You know about canal boats. You used to live near Nuln. You used to take them every now and again. If you get uh, yourselves a passage on a canal boat. You can probably get up there within a couple of weeks, so you probably make the deadline just about. Um, so that's your best bet: is to try and cut through the mountains somehow. Sounds like what well, the the river. I'm guessing there's going to be through the mountains, isn't it? By looks Presumably, but you're probably going to have to schlep it through the mountains somehow. That's your quickest way of doing it. Yeah, I know. So that's going to how be are the thing. how are the penguins doing? Uh, if penguins are good, you managed to put their pantomime costume back together. And actually, you've right. got the monks. The monks all know what these things are. <laughs> um, but again, like Louis, like just when you get into hot water, like Jean-Louis keeps coming up to them and going, the work of Tal is mysterious. To the point where Ratty has started like mangling the same speech to people, going, uh, how do you say that, Ratty? The work of Tal is mysterious, works mysterious ways, like kind of bullshit. How do I say it? No, how do Ratty say it? The same thing. You know, right, Tal, you know, right, he's like <laughs> the king of squirrels, and he's the king of <laughs> That's weird, isn't it? Like, he's a king of, like, I mean, I've been thinking about the squirrel king for quite some time. <laughs> what is his crown made of? Acorns? Mental. Absolutely mental. <laughs> so that's what you say when somebody's asking you about why these hideous creatures of chaos are still alive. We haven't like got a witch hunter to burn them to death. Good. Okay. <laughs> so blathering your way through. Good. Basically, <laughs> right? Carl moves in mysterious ways, and these big beautiful bastards are part of his plan. I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's what you say to all the monks. They, they actually make you a much better pantomime costume for the two um, hideously deformed creatures of chaos. So now your war penguins have much more convincing, better... They even have straps and tightenings now. So it's almost like they're wearing, like... It's almost like they're wearing a, a pantomime suit, but it looks actually vaguely convincing from a distance. Um, as you get a bit closer to them, not so much. Um, but from a distance, they could pass as horses now, um, which is kind of cool. So your war penguins, you can put that... Somebody please, dear God, write down the trappings of the war penguins, amongst <laughs> everything else. Um, that's that. Uh, so anything else that you're trying to do, Teddy? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, okay. I'm pretty happy. I'll, I'll start trying to learn to read as well. 
get some it's lessons fine. while I'm here. Okay, you, you can start that process. I'm, I'm take got any, I haven't got any XP left. So That's fine. Um, can start I that can process. help teach him. Uh, yeah, you can help. So if you do that, you're going to end up reading like a Skaven would read. <laughs> Which I read on world of okay. fine. So you can start that process. That's fine. You can start like learning to read. And XP as well, anyway, Clem. You can't. You can't just learn even. I think you need the XP, like because I will want, want to learn to read as well, but um, I don't have enough XP. So that okay. Let's face it. You'll forget about it until like like a year of another role playing. Oh shit! I'm supposed to learn to read. <laughs> so that's it. Um... <laughs> Um, are, we, are we moving on to items then that we may want to uh, see if, uh, exist yes, in this we place? Are. Yeah, we're about to move on to okay. sort of trappings, you know, essentially cool. quasi shopping. Unless there's anything yeah. else that anybody wants to talk about in terms of like your skill sets and things. Um, is it okay if I keep 200 XP then? Because that's, you I can, think I'm only yeah. down to 200. Because yeah, um, I can't think it. of anything right now. You can bank it and save it. You don't yeah, have to spend it. Yeah, bank it. Yeah. This right, because uh, you've got no like stats you want to take. Um, I'm I'm pretty much all out on this. I changed career, and all the other careers are oh, pretty much shite. <laughs> you know, because I started as beggar, and the beggar advancement is absolutely dreck. Yeah, but you don't, you don't you don't have to follow that. You can go to anything within reason, as long as you can find a narrative reason to do so. So you could become yeah, a I know, chef. Um, you could become like a fucking bodyguard. You could become an outlaw in the right set of circumstances and yeah. try to learn those skills. It doesn't have to follow a career path, you know. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's just that sort of, um, what is it? Um, the only healer who's really here um, basically slammed the door in my face. Um, so we went with herb law. Yeah. Um, the right. only other thing I can think of is uh, herbalism, if there's anyone who can do that. So I can try and learn a little bit more about the actual processing of herbs. You mean but, prepare um, poisons and stuff? Um, it's more a case of prepare healing. Um, there's manufactured uh, drugs, which you could do. Identify um, plant, I guess. Yeah, it's it's just just sort of uh, trying to do the entire because um, there's uh, the <clears throat> herbalist character class, but they have a certain select number of skills. Oh, um, I see. Um, it's kind of useful. Oh, I see. And as we're in, it was as we're around sort of a nature um, a nature place anyway. Yeah, yeah, that so makes I, sense. I, That's fair enough. So, so you want to you want to start looking. So herbalism has things like cure disease, heal wounds, herb law, um, um, identify plants, uh, and that's kind of what they have really. Yeah, well, you, you give me the rudimentary herb lore. I'm quite interested in healing. That'd oh, okay. Quite so you handy. To heal wounds, basically. Okay. Yeah, using so, herbalism. Okay, yeah. so you're going to make an intelligence test. Okay, um, that you, might be you, tricky. You've got, you've got herb lore, so I'm going to give you plus 10. Okay. That. Cool. And, uh, yeah, roll it. If you fail, you're going to spend the experience but learn nothing. Uh, that's and fair you enough. Can, you can do it again with another additional plus 10, which would be like plus 20 then. Yep. So you're Life's a gamble. Yeah. <laughs> So that is a 99. <laughs> That's a critical failure. I'm uh, going to say that you're never going to understand how to do it. I'm okay, going to say okay. that's a critical failure, and I have to honor the dice, sir. That's so fair. That's, that's all, the fair. one off being the worst role you could ever wear. So, no matter, even though they took three of them to try and teach you how to set bones, how to not kill somebody under the knife, and all that kind of stuff. You just don't get it. It's something about it's you, not in me. <laughs> it's you being a Skaven, them being humans, different physiology, different mindset, different set of yeah. like you know muscular fear yeah. glands. You just don't yeah. fucking get how humans work. It's too <laughs> weird. And elves and halflings, it's just too weird. So, but uh, but but they're, they're, they're bleeding. I just want to eat them. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, well, are you sure this doesn't go there? That's the anus. It's like, you know, yeah. it's just like, you just don't get it. So you spend the 100 okay. experience, you're going to lose the 100 experience. You will yeah. never be able to learn uh, heal wounds. It's just, you That's just don't get fair. it. That's fair. Okay. You just don't get That's it. cool. <laughs> just, it's, like, it's a human being. You know, it's just, it doesn't yeah. make any sense. Well, um, as I said, life's a gamble. Life's a gamble. So sorry about that, sir. So on the rolls, that's cool. as it is. That's cool. Uh, so that's hundred. You've got hundred left um, to do with what, as you will. Yeah, I, I think I think I'm going to bank that for the minute. <laughs> yeah. <Sure. laughs> no um, okay. So unless anybody else wants to do any more advancements on their characters, uh, it's really about like kind of stuff and cool shit and eighteen and MacGyver stuff. What are you gonna do? Cool. Um, who, who's going first? Let's go back MacGyver. to Tommy. Tom. There is something I want to do. There is a, a moment, having spent, you know, I probably spent, had a few conversations with um, the monks and with the head of La Maison Tau, and I'm beginning to figure out the shape of how Tal works. Mm -hmm. And along that path, I realized that I've made one sweet, 
you know, well intentioned but dreadful mistake. What's that? So one day I find a quiet place in a corner of um, a pretty sort of sunlit courtyard. Yeah. Um, and I dig a little pit with my bare hands and I take uh, Mabel, my chicken hat. Yeah. And I say, Mabel, my sweetheart, you were a truly loving friend. But what I did to bring you back like this was not right. And it was against the Squirrel King. And it was against you. And it was against everything. And I I shouldn't have done it. It's not good magic. You know, I'm beginning to learn now there is good magic and bad magic. And I'm trying to stay with the good magic. So, my sweet little thing, I'm going to just let you go now. I think it's for the best. Okay. Is um, it, did you carefully, like, gently, like, to ho like, hold it over the hole and then just drop it in it? it Mabel just goes fucking bananas. <laughs> and just starts trying to peck you and, like, just, like scrabbling out the hole and smacking into the hole. It's just, like, it's throwing around, basically, like, you're trying to, it's like, as if you've cut its head off. And it's just smashing around this hole like this one. Like that. And just stops and just looks at you. And it looks at you with such hatred and such wow. like, anger. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I just poured my heart into that little I know you did. But it's a fucking undead chicken. What do you expect? This thing doesn't have, have feelings. You, have, have you just just obtained a chicken nemesis? <laughs> <laughs> I am now the leash master. <laughs> so this thing is just, it's going mental. Like you're, you're basically just dumping it into the hole. Gently, admittedly, but you are sort of like leaving it in this hole. Um, what are you going to do now? This thing is like... Is there a way that I can magically shut it down? Like... <laughs> no, you can just fill the pit with like soil and move on with your life, I guess. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, I should have thrown it on the pyre with Ziggy. Yep. Um... <laughs> Sorry. So, Tom, it's going to be fine. You know, a fox is going to get a bit of a nasty surprise tonight, but, you know, apart from that, it'd be great. <laughs> uh, all right, look, all right. I, you can stay with me as a sort of reminder that I shouldn't do this shit, but I'm not wearing you on my bloody head anymore because it's a bit weird, all right? I'm just going to, um, you know, I'll just find <laughs> a, a crate, okay? I'm just, I'm, you just stay in a crate, okay? <laughs> Try and learn how to grow feathers, because I need them for one of my new spells, okay? <laughs> Calms down a little bit. Fucking good chicken. <laughs> You're welcome. Worst familiar <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you now have, can you please put down your trappings? You now have undead chicken in box. And uh, <laughs> you don't have to carry that on your personage. It can be on the, the war penguins and in your you know, supply train or whatever the fuck you guys have. Uh, but you now have an undead. Mabel is now in a, in a little wooden crate. Uh, I've got undead chicken in brackets, Mabel. Yeah, in <laughs> there you go. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so you got that. That's just going to buck around. Every now and again, it makes like it lays the worst, smelliest egg you've ever had, you've seen in your life, and there's just no idea. It's useful for Teddy, like stink bombs. So maybe, Ooh, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. yeah you got stink bombs. I'm not now. entirely yeah. sure Mabel's going to be too fresh either after a couple of weeks. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. It's already been like it's only been a few days, you know. Uh, okay, so we have that. So that's that's that, that was a beautiful moment, Tom. I had to go with what would absolutely going to happen. <laughs> Uh, so thank you for that. Um, okay, so what about in terms of equipment, or in terms of items and things like that that you wish to do, sir? I mean, I'm good. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Moving on to Teddy. Teddy, you have plundered about ninety gold crowns from. Uh, oh, Leash sorry. Let me. I will refresh my ingredients, spell ingredients, but none of them are very complicated. Oh, get your armor fixed. Yeah, sorry. I'll go and see. I'll go and see Scooter and get my armor fixed. Okay. That's something. To do. So you go and see Scooter, and Sco it's been like a while since you've seen him. And you walk into basically the the blacksmithery is just completely fucked still. And you see that he's been trying to repair it, um, but to really no avail. And you walk in, and he goes, "Oh, nice of you to come around. It's only been a week." Like that, he's sort of like <laughs> hoiking some other shit out the way. His whole blacksmithery is completely fucked. I'm really sorry, Scoot. I had to put an undead chicken in a box. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
It was emotional, all right? <laughs> was, oh, that's all right. I'm pretty emotional, too. I mean, you know, it's not like my legacy of my family is, like, you know, being light in ruins or anything. He just sits down and goes, oh, my dad said there'd be days like this. Here I am, apparently, you know, the hands of a blacksmith, and nobody will take me seriously on the account of me being so incredibly, like, you know, teenage <laughs> and stuff. And he starts, like, moping around. You see, actually, there's a blackened picture on the wall um, what looks to be like Scooter, but much more manly and more burly and with a big, massive, like, long tash. And you realize that's probably like, his old man, like, it's probably his dad uh, mm. or his grandfather or something. And you, you sort of get the feeling now, he's never really explained it, but this, this smithery is, he's, like, his family been here a long time. And he does sort of open up a little bit and he just tell you that this base, this place, like, one of the, when La Maison Tal first was constructed, there was um, there was one of his ancestors here, and his family had basically been tied to this place. He's never he's never even left the valley, um, although he's been to Grenier, you know, and he's seen a, a big city, etc. He's never explored. He's never been anywhere, and for some inexplicable reason, he just doesn't have the heart to rebuild the blacksmithery, and he's sort of done with the place. And he, he sort of says this a few times, like I'm sort of done with the place, you know. And he leaves us hanging in between you, and just looks at you like, mm, anyway. And just like, you know, it's <laughs> awkward. awkward. Well, good boy, that scooty you out, pal. I'm no, I'm joking. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, scooter, yeah, what, what is your surname? What is your uh, scooter pooter? That would be good. Scooter pooter, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's man, um, manchlin. We're we're probably, I think we've got to go somewhere. Teddy's got to return some kind of box somewhere that he okay, probably then. nicked. Oh, he should okay, be nicked. Sure. Yeah, okay, we can do that. We're yeah. going to go up yeah, Empire. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Like, <laughs> um, so, you want to come with us? Yeah, you know, sure. Okay, that sounds great. Yeah, fantastic. Like, every time you start opening your mouth, he's basically he's going, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, sure. No problem. Let's do it. All right. You can. You can. Carry all the heavy stuff, though. <laughs> all right. Oh, all right. <laughs> You've basically got yourself a roleplay intern. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love. I love your instincts were going to already abusing him as such. Um, roleplay intern. Uh, yeah, good. Okay, so you, you also like give him your, your leather armor and sort of ask him to refresh it and stuff like that. He's, he's like, yeah, no problem at all. Like, all right, chief. Nice to be on board. Um, <clears throat> he starts getting on with it. Um, and he goes, so did you want this, like, you want this done soon? And his voice just, like, goes all over the place. Um, yeah, yeah, before we go, yeah, if you could, like, just fix this up, that would be, that would be cracking. No, that would be no, no, he just, like, puts his glasses. Um, if you wouldn't mind hanging, handing that thing over to me, that'd be great. And he just starts getting to work immediately. And starts, like, putting stuff down. He looks like he's really chipper. Like, ever since you basically, he basically barged into your party, um, he's like a lot happier and he's really up for it. He seems to be really up for leaving this uh, two bit religious temple and um, seeing the sights and seeing the world. Uh, he's pretty happy about that. Okay, Loki. Um, so I guess that's everything for you, Tom, unless there's anything else that you want to talk about. No, that's me done. Cool, cool. I think Pete has to go in any, any second now. So, yeah, Pete, so anything that you want to get through, sir? He might have already gone, in fact. I think, I think he might have, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, what time he did. He could drop us a line on on uh, no, just to let. Know. Oh, fine. In which case, let's assume that he's just counting his money. Um, on, <laughs> sir, is there anything else that you want to do? Because we're going to wrap up soon. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm uh, okay. <clears throat> Small list. Um, right. Okay. So um, a, a proper backpack would be really handy. Oh, right. Um, okay. Yeah, like a human. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah you, um, you can you can get that. You can get that made. Uh, uh, Scooch can do that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and I'm assuming that I'm out of beetle carpes to make any arms for the armor. Ah, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Yes, you can. Um, you are going to... He's going to be using a lot of his resources to do that. It's going to be like an armor... How much do you take with you, actually? How much did you actually ha nick or take back from the beetles? So okay, uh, I, I took I took a well. You you said that um, I couldn't actually hold any more um, stuff. It was just that was um, effectively all I could really carry, and I was carrying it in one of my sacks. Yeah, that's so right. I'm not yeah. entirely sure how much that was. It was um, yeah, it was a ver at the very least a breastplate. Um, and maybe but, some um, I didn't know if... or something like that. Some leg armor. 
Okay. Well, um, well, I, I, I can, I can do some. Yeah, leg armor. Yeah, cool. Um, okay. Yeah. I... Uh, or some, or, or arms, I guess. Legs or arm, one or the other. Yeah. Um, actually, I'll, I'll go arms. Okay. They're, so they're more useful to me. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So, so Scooter does that. You're going to have to forgo any money you would have made from this will go to Scooter because, quite frankly, it's, it costs yeah, a lot cool. of legs. He's going to use most of his resources up to make that. But he does. He makes you this awesome emerald shaded, um, beetle-ish like armor plate, um, which is like a full coat of armor. Um, cool. With, the, with and the breastplate is solid. And the arms have got like these slats, which are breathable and movable, so they're quite flexible. Yeah. And it's all made from the beetle armor, the shell of the beetle stuff that you you, you half inched off those dead beetles yeah. all that time ago. So yeah, you can you've got now this beautiful emerald green beetle shell breastplate and uh, arm sleeves that come off it. It's an all in one thing. Don't, don't don't forget the uh, was it the uh, the penguin motif which you gave me for the breastplate That's earlier. That's true. Yes, yeah, so you, you, you can have a penguin motif on it, so the penguin can. Be Lovely. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's um, you'll have to forgo any gold that you would have been given because that would, scooter would have asked you to recover any costs. You, you know, especially if he's coming with you, he's still going to have to buy materials and stuff. So he's t he's taking yeah. all of that from you. So whatever you made from this thing that you would have, he would have taken that. Um, cool. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So I guess that's it, really, folks. Um, Pete has got a deadline. Whether Pete tells you that deadline or not, we'll have to find out next time, I guess. And we'll have to work that one out in between. We're heading off back to the Empire, basically. You're heading off back to the Empire, which for some of you will be a whole new thing, including Quint. Uh, Dr. Dasher and uh, Wavy Davy, after patching up, and they do this sort of their own recuperating. They spend a lot of time together off. And actually, one day they all come through, and, they, and actually Dasher is looking very bashful and very red. And Davy just like walks forward and looks at all of you and goes, so, it looks like the old fucker proposed, and he puts his hand out, and he's this beautiful gold ruby uh, in, 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 in crest ring on Wavy Davy's hand. And Dr. Dash is not looking at his feet, really embarrassed. And uh, you all have realized that he's, he, he said, Dr. Dash had proposed, and, and, and then Wavy Davy says, and I said, we, like that, you know, using Bretonian. And everyone starts clapping around, and they actually, oh. they actually get, and actually they set the date, they're gonna be married, in uh, in actually Wavy Davy's hometown, um, which is a place called uh, Bogenhofen, which is although it's actually no, sorry, that's not Wavy Davy's hometown. It's actually um, a hometown that that, what, that Dr. Dashing was raised in, but he's not from there. He originally he's from um, Marienburg, I think it is, um, but he he's grew up there. It's a place called Bogenhofen, and mm. they're going to be married there in the early autumn, and you're all invited. So they they decided that they want to follow, they want to they've ever heard you talk about going potentially through the mountain range which is a bit dangerous but the quickest way to the the empire perhaps if you're going to do that they'll come with you but then they're going to branch off and go north to Bogenhofen because uh, they've got lots of things to plan they've got to introduce Dash has got to introduce Davy to his family who, who live in Bogenhofen still and that you're all invited to come and see them to, for the autumn October fest that they have there which apparently is amazing it's all like full of drinking and food and festivals and it's really fun oh, <coughs> wedding. that's yeah. exciting it's the first vagabond yeah. wedding it's nice so yeah. they're, gonna, they're gonna come with you through the mountain range but then they'll break off north and they'll see you in bogenhofen around the equivalent of october which is i can't remember if it's called tubity or something like that um anyway so that's that's the invitation uh, other news I the dwarves are going back to the gray mountains um they sort of had their feel the mine is dead um it was dying on its feet anyway um but they also thank you and uh, they sort of like, you know, they all say, you know, if ever you need their help, basically, they're to seek them out in the hold. They give you the name of the hold that they, they'll go back to where they're originally from. Although they're, they're essentially their standing will be severely depleted um, because they've lost uh, lost the mine, which regardless of the circumstance is a terrible thing for a dwarf to have to endure. Um, but if you're ever in need and in help, uh, they'll be there to, to offer you help and support as a dwarf friend. Um, I think that's sort of everybody of note, really. The La Maison town comes back together. It's pieced together um, pretty quickly and well. It's flooded with new acolytes. Uh, the Iron Man is being used still to repair the damage, and Jean-Louis has thanked you um, profusely for donating it to La Maison town, especially with the depleted numbers of the monks. This will go a long way to try and keep the community safe uh, from any wild animals or mutants or anything that they do have to face off from time to time. Um, the La Maison Tale itself, the village around has been pretty much wiped out, but already the, the houses are being made, most of them stand empty. Uh, they're waiting for new pilgrims and new families, hopefully, to come from surrounding areas, or maybe even the Empire. 
Um, in fact, they ask you, uh, Ratty, and Jean-Louis comes up to you towards the end and hands you a letter and goes, Ratty, mes amis, my brother, um, I would uh, ask in honor from you to do me a favor. This needs to go to the hell of, of the uh, embassy of the Tallerite clan in Altdorf, and I need your help to deliver this missive. Wee oui, wee, oui, I say, because I've been picking up the lingo. You have, and also, you can say wee oui, wee oui in a croissant. Also, I need a wee. Oui. Yeah, that too, you're crossing <laughs> your legs as you do that, Greg. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, as he accepts this sort of thing, he goes, please also accept this pilgrimage for uh, La Maison Tell as a way of your initiation as an honorary monk of the, of the Order of Tal. You are going to be known as a brother, uh, Ratty, from now on. Oh, that's nice of you. Thank you, mate. You're my brother, too. Um, and if you really think about it, aren't we all brothers? Well, he looks at the Skaven, not everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea is nice. <laughs> I might go up to Quinton and give him a little hug. He go, he's my brother. He certainly is. I'm I'm starting the new Tal, the Tal that welcomes any everything. The sky's he... darken and the tree that you're standing <laughs> next to, the holy tree, starts shaking uncontrollably. <laughs> That, that 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 is okay, Master Ratican. It's, it's, it's fine. <laughs> I'd rather not get struck by lightning. Thank you very much. Not again. <laughs> right. I'm already a touch crispy. Okay. okay. So yes, you sort of you make your misses, and you, you're you're now what is known as a monk wizard. Um, so you are a monk of Toll, which means you have essentially access to things that you require monks get. I don't know what they get. Comfy slippers, I'm not sure. I'll work it out. Um, but you also get given a pendant of toll. And on the back is inscribed, has been hammered in, an inscription which is from La Maison Tal to, to verify who you are and your status within the cult, which is that you are a monk of toll. Um, so, yeah. I yeah, I, 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 Tom, you've just gained plausible deniability when it comes to your magical abilities. <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, I think so. Is that is that right, Neil? What's or that? Is, is that essentially like a good... It's not a that... license to practice magic, if that's what you're asking, no. But it is, right. it's, it's a helpful thing if you ever get cornered by, let's say, a witch hunter. Um, <laughs> it might help by saying this is a verified thing. This is a real thing, yeah. It'll right. slow them down. <laughs> yeah, it might slow them down. Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> Worth a shot. <laughs> Worth a shot, motherfucker. It's All more right. than you had five minutes ago. <clears throat> cool. So uh, is there anything else that you want to do, folks? Or are we going to wrap this up? Let's blow this pop stand. All right. Yeah. So yeah. with that, with the last look, you all pay Ziggy's uh, interment grave, which is actually in the catacombs of La Maison Tell. One last uh, moment. Uh, his sword has been um, bronzed and has been fixed to his coffin. Um, he's been put actually in one of the center, the center areas. If you remember the center areas underneath, there's like a whole bunch of like uh, monks that have been interned in this like area here. And they were like lined up, so their coffins are like in stone, and their bodies being re-exhumed and stuff. Uh, Resumed, um, and his his is actually in place near the center, which is a huge, huge honor uh, if anybody actually cares. Um, but it's a huge honor for somebody that is not part of Tal and is not a monk. They've also put the the crest of Sigma on top of the uh, of the tomb itself, and his names have been written down in the annuals of the fighters of La Maison Tal, of the protectors of La Maison Tal. So Ziggy's been paid a huge honor. Uh, which really doesn't deserve a, uh, um, but anyway, I guess it's fitting for, for somebody who actually did help save uh, save La Maison Tell from a fate worse than death. Um, with that, you all part uh, company. Your supplies are laden up. You have bags and trappings fit for people about to cross a mountain range, and you set off east uh, towards uh, the old world through the shortest passage you can, which is just past the Frugalhof Valley, just over here. Uh, the frugal horn itself, which you have to skirt across either this side or this side, and we'll find out, I guess, next what happens to you then. And on making your way to Nome, some three, some two weeks of hard travelling through the mountains. You have a guide with you. Uh, Scooter has decided to come with you too. Blue has joined you after having sort of some time out from all of you lot and Fleck. And you also you went out the tree for uh, for uh, pretty month. much <laughs> yeah, pretty much as you. Uh, 
head, just yeah, shaking, just shaking their, their head, head, going, "What the fuck am I doing here?" Um, yeah. So, as your ragtag band, including Doctor Dasher, Wavy Davy, um, start walking towards being f being farewelled by the people of La Maison Town and making your way towards the uh, mountain ranges, which you have to pass, and who knows what dangers you'll encounter there, uh, with rice and cake, of course, um, in tow. Um, you look one last one last glance back to the valley that's claimed almost claimed your lives and in some ways made you a closer group and a closer group of vagabonds for that matter on the road again still no home to call your own but more wiser perhaps and more capable and looking at the world with different eyes certainly you ratty have gone through a fundamental change leaving one of your fellow companions behind not knowing if all of you will survive the journey let alone the roads and days ahead you turn eastward back to the motherland of the empire and forwards into perhaps your next great adventure. And on that note, folks, we're going to cut back to the last resting place of the Leashmaster. A figure walks across the glade. The, the grass around the feet of the figure parts and blackens with every single step that these feet make across as the personage of whom you can't see just yet steps towards the last ashes they put their hands deep into the into the blackened uh, pile of dust and viscera and pull out a clump of this dust pouring it into a container and then another and then another standing up the person turns around and looks towards somebody off off camera i guess because we can't see them off camera and says well my darling ball ripper looks like we're close enough that i can get my hands she pulls up both of her hands one of which is pure silver and made of this kind of weird metallic uh, structure and goes hands around those vagabonds little do they know they're walking into my trap we pull back to see a veronica class the ex-wife also the widow of Sinterklaas, and as well uh, not ball ripper sorry that was Sinterklaas she's talking to my dear Sinter. and we see the zombified form of Sinterklaas standing in front of her um Scratching his head because she called him Bull Ripper. <laughs> Sorry, did not practice this at all. Um, she, he holds his hand out. She takes his arm in, her, in hers, and they both wander off again, heading towards the east, away from the last resting place of the Leashmaster. Seemingly, some new plot and some new dastardly ambition that must surely uh, involve the Vagabond Party. Will they survive? Will they die humiliating death? We will oh. find out. Dum, 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 dum. That was a very good cliffhanger, only mildly ruined by name dropping. My... <laughs> name dropping somebody that's been blown to smithereens. So. Yeah, yeah, baby. Well, there you go, folks. So we've just had, <laughs> just had a little teaser of Veronica Class. Uh, our boys and every and girls and everything are heading towards the mountain range, back to the Empire, and Wavy Davy and uh, Doctor Dasher are now hitched, which is pretty. Or going to get hitched, which is pretty cool. Um, I love, there were some good developments there that in general. Yeah. That was cool. That was good. So like yeah. you said, folks, this was definitely going to be an ad mini kind of narrative heavy um, session, but we wanted to just like round off all the stories because we are going to take a break. We're going to take about a three or four week break. We're going to come back. We've got some new ideas, uh, which we'll probably tease you about the week before to let you know what things are you can look We're still going to be doing no big kneel and stuff. Just so, just so don't get confused. Like we are <laughs> yeah. around. It's just, just the vagabonds, vagabonds. are going to take. That's the vagabonds right. are going to take a break while we reboot. Yeah. Um, so that's right. Uh, as Tom said, uh, Tom and I are going to be doing new, no big deal with our guests and friends, so playing the games that you like and that we like. We've got some yeah. nice surprises next week and the week after as well, and possibly in the near future too, depending on timings. Um, so we'll keep you abreast of all that stuff. No big deal. We keep running as, as normal, but then the vagabonds are going to be on hiatus for about a month or so, I would say. Yeah. So end of June, probably something like that. Cool. Uh, who wants to flip it? I guess it's uh, Quint. You haven't flipped it for no good reason for a while. Yeah, yeah no, I have. Do do yeah, yeah cool. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um. Uh, oh, remember we have a song. Oh, that's right. One last thing. <laughs> yeah. Folks. One last thing. We folks. Have yeah. One last thing, folks. Don't go anywhere because we're going to play you a special song that we actually have all the rights to because we fucking did it ourselves and Clem, <laughs> Clem sing, sung it so if you want to stick around we're going to play the song directly after flipping this fucking table alright cool so, Rightio. so flipping in three two 
Thanks for the nods and everybody. Bye. Beautiful. <laughs> Stick around for the songs coming up next. Bye, bye, folks. Bye. 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 Now how we came to get this hat's a tale both dark and funny. The lich lord tried to kill us all, our victory was sunny. The battle it was nasty, stabby and all that. We not only shot him in the balls, we also stole his hat. Oh, where did you get that necro hat? Where did you get that style? Oh, isn't it a bony one and full of undead bile? I would like to theft one just the same as that. Where'er I go, they scream hello. Whose necro hat is that? Soon turned up the witch hunters there, all dressed in deepest brown. They stared in awe upon my head and passed me half a crown. It's clear to see you vanquish evil for a fee. But may we ask respectfully one small request of thee. Where did you get that necro hat? Where did you get that style? Isn't it a bony one and full of undead bile? We would like to theft one just the same as that. Where'er I go, they scream, hello, whose necro hat is that? Now when the fight was said and done, we went to Maison Town to parlay with the abbot there, because he was a pal. Of all the spoils around the lich and items worth of nicking, at least when it comes to stealing hats, it's not a fucking chicken. Oh, where'd you get that necro hat? Where did you get that style? Oh, isn't it a bony one and full of undead bile? I would like to theft one just the same as that. Where'er I go, they scream, hello, whose necro hat is that? <laughs>